Clinton filing his order in the Southern District wasn't the only thing happening in the Southern District. You also had the state responding to the Langley plaintiff's Fifth Amendment challenge. Welcome back, Bishop on air, uh, hanging out with you. And uh, we are, of course, uh, still having some problems with the with the flipping Internet. Uh, we'll see if we can get that sorted out even after having a tech come in. Uh, maybe it's just OBS being uh, uh, screwy with me, but uh, hopefully we get this uh, sorted so that we uh, don't have these issues moving forward, especially for those watching live uh, here with Bishop on air. Um, all right. Continue on with the latest filing, uh, not Judge Stephen McGlynn's filing in the Southern District of Illinois, but you also on Friday had the state respond to the Langley plaintiffs. Let's pull that up and take a look here. Uh, you've got uh, the case that, of course, is on a, a variety of different things. You've had Second Amendment arguments. You've had the uh, 14th Amendment arguments, uh, vagueness issues, for instance. And now we get into uh, the Fifth Amendment arguments. So the state saying that Director Kelly identified three independent reasons why the Langley plaintiffs cannot prevail in their claim that an endorsement affidavit an endorsement affidavit which we take a look uh, has yet to be updated with the illinois state police uh numbers today uh still showing january 31st the last time they actually uh had those numbers updated uh but you've got the uh the case from the uh, fifth amendment arguments on that registry component uh, being challenged and the uh, endorsement affidavits the state says uh, does not violate constitutional privileges against second um, uh, self-incrimination plaintiffs respond with a mix of errors irrelevancies and new arguments designed to obscure their inability to rebut any of director kelly's points director kelly being illinois state police director for this reason and also because plaintiffs are mounting a high profile challenge to the constitutionally of a recently enacted state law these are ex exceptional uh, circumstances justifying a reply pursuant to local rule seven director kelly has uh, first explained registration and disclosure requirements violate the privilege against self-discrimination only if they are directed to people suspected of criminal activity and automatically subject those people to criminal penalties endorsement affidavit by contrast has neither of these features plaintiffs do not dispute the governing legal standard of or offer any contrary reading that the cases director kelly cited and supports they do not contend that the affidavit is directed at the criminally suspect and they do not argue an affidavit submitted according to the requirements of the law would automatically subject anyone to criminal penalties those omissions are fatal to their claim they say director kelly next explained that the endorsement affidavit does not violate the privilege uh against self-incrimination because no one's compelled to submit one they say a person who refuses is not exposed to penalties on the basis alone plaintiffs point to emergency rules that they think provide otherwise but the final rules effective february 8th which is a month and eight days after the uh, january the january 1st deadline uh, but the final rules effective Feb february 8th refer to penalties for possession of an assault weapon without having completed an electronic endorsement affidavit in any event an illinois agency cannot use its rulemaking authority to rewrite or expand a statute and it goes on to say that it is the act of possessing an assault weapon that exposes people to criminal penalties Plaintiffs do not deny that a person who declines to submit an endorsement affidavit has viable alternatives to avoid liability for possession, nor do they take at any issue with the case law holding mere possession to speak in hopes of obtaining a benefit does not make the speech compelled. Again, these omissions are fatal to their claim. Finally, Director Kelly explained uh, that the endorsement affidavit does not violate the privilege against self-incrimination because the information it contains does not present a real and substantial risk of incrimination. Uh, plaintiffs do not deny their fears about traffic stops and targeted uh, targeting by police are under the case law merely trifling and imaginary and thus insufficient to invoke the privilege. Once more, these omissions are fatal to their claim. The plaintiffs have no response to any of director kelly's arguments the state says what do they have to say mostly they worry about hypothetical people who might submit endorsement affidavits after the deadline january 1st uh, but the law provides anyone who wanted to continue possessing an assault weapon they owned on the statute's effective date must have submitted the affidavit prior to january 1st 2024 but what if someone tries to submit an affidavit today or next month or next year as plaintiffs see it all a late registration does is admit the person filing some uh, same committed a crime because any 
firearm not registered prior to January 1st, 2024 is illegal, period. Thus, they reason that the affidavit violates the privilege against self-incrimination, at least as uh, to late registrations. The problem, the plaintiff's state says, is that they have not provided any evidence showing that they submitted or intend to submit untimely affidavits. To the contrary, the state says plaintiff's response insists that there's no benefit to registering at this point. As the Illinois State Police guidance attached to plaintiff's response makes clear, the deadlines are set by statutes and prosecutor may conclude a late submission is invalid or insufficient to exempt the uh, the uh, affiant uh, from criminal liability. Regardless, plaintiffs do not suggest much less establish with evidence that they have personally been injured due to submitting an untimely affidavit. Uh, thus, they lack standing to pursue this claim on behalf of themselves. Uh, they continue on, uh, the state says, and as the court recently reminded other plaintiffs in these consolidated cases, they cannot bring suit on behalf of hypothetical unnamed Illinois citizens. To the contrary, under Article 3, a federal court may resolve only a real controversy with real impact on real persons all right because federal courts do not adjudicate hypothetical or abstract disputes and do not possess a roving commission to publicly opine on every legal question the court lacks just jurisdiction uh, to address plaintiffs speculative concerns about hypothetical third parties who plaintiffs own logic uh, would have no reason to submit an untimely endorsement affidavit. Uh, besides, the argument is meritless. Just as one uh, was compelled to submit an endorsement affidavit before the deadline, no one's compelled to submit one after the deadline. Since Chief Justice Marshall first gave attention to the matter in the trial, Aaron Burr, uh, all have agreed that a necessary element of compulsory self-incrimination is some kind of compulsion. But there's no compulsion here because a person who declines to submit an untimely endorsement affidavit is not risking serious punishment for refusing to do so. In fact, there is no penalty at all, the state says. Again, this is fatal to the plaintiff's claim. So it goes on to say that plaintiffs make three additional points that uh, require quick correction, makes those points, uh, then goes on to essentially say that uh, this case uh, should be uh, dismissed. Plaintiffs have no response to Director Scully arguments that a timely endorsement affidavit does not run afoul of the privilege against self-incrimination, and they have no right under Article 3 to prosecute hypothetical claims about untimely affidavits. For all those reasons, the court should grant Director Kelly's cross motion for summary judgment. So there you go. Uh, you've got this uh, ongoing situation where uh, you know the, the state even responding to the uh, the Langley plaintiffs' uh, Fifth Amendment arguments in this case. Uh, and that was another filing that was made on Friday. So uh, again, for those of you who are watching live and you got kicked off, uh, that's why we record these here locally, so we're able to get this out to you in short order. All right, so I appreciate you guys being here each and every weekday morning. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, always more to come here with Bishop On Air.